one video, 50 state names to explain. Let's just get cracking, shall we? And I'm going to ease myself in a bit here by beginning with New York. Although it's not actually directly named after the city in England where I used to live, it's named after James Stuart, the Duke of York, who eventually went on to become King James II. What's the origin of York, though? Well, the Romans called the place Eboracum, inspired by an existing Celtic name for the area, meaning place of the yew tree. When the Anglo-Saxons came along, they put their own little spin on Eboracum and called it Jorvorwik, which translates as village of the boar. And then the Vikings named the place Jorvik, from which we get York. If you want to know what the Vikings might have called New York, check out the Icelandic name for the place. Homesickness is behind the name of New Hampshire, which is of course named for the English county of Hampshire. So the Anglo-Saxons, Hampshire was Hamtunskir, which appears to mean village, town, county. See that skir at the end? That becomes our word shire, and also gives us the start of the word sheriff. The Shire Reeve was a district official. New Jersey is named after the Channel Island of Jersey, and as I explained in a recent video, that's probably named after a Viking. It's thought to perhaps mean Gears Island. Oh, and here's a good one. Did you know that New Mexico was called New Mexico before Mexico was called Mexico? It is true. The Spanish came up with the name Nuevo Mexico in the 1500s, and they were naming it after a region around present-day Mexico City. Mexico in turn, comes from this word for the area. New York, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico. What isn't new is the practice among colonists of naming the lands they come across after places they already know. Even when the places they've arrived in already have long established names that were given to them by the locals. A large proportion of this video is of course going to centre around Native American names. The names of more than half the states are at the very least inspired by words from indigenous languages. But let me just tick off some more of the ones that aren't, because another practice popular among the Europeans was the rather sycophantic naming of places after their bosses back home. Georgia, for example, is named after Britain's King George II, who granted the charter for its formation in 1732. And the Carolinas are named after King Charles I. Carolina comes from the Latin form of Charles, Carolus. In fact, Carolina was very briefly called Carolana. Carolina was split into two in 1710, 61 years after Charles himself had had something very similar happen to him. Maryland is named after Charles's wife, Queen Henrietta Maria, who was a real badass, actually. She managed to avoid the same fate as her husband at the end of the English Civil War by fleeing back to her native France, but only after raising an army on Charles's behalf. She died in France in 1669 during the reign of her nephew, King Louis XIV, the Sun King, Le Roi Soleil, and after whom Louisiana is named. The French actually called it La Louisiane, but that got anglicised into Louisiana. And there's one more European monarch who got a state named after them, Queen Elizabeth I. Seen as one of England's greatest ever monarchs, she saw off the Spanish Armada and oversaw a golden era for the arts. And yet, it's the fact that she was a virgin that was immortalised in the name of the state of Virginia. I'm sure she was thrilled, and I bet she's even more thrilled to know that there are now two states named after her. You know, friends of Elizabeth I claim she could speak as many as nine languages. That's probably an exaggeration, but at the very least we know that she was a master of French, Italian and Latin, because we have documents and translations that she wrote. But nowadays, she could have just used Type AI. Type AI is an iOS keyboard extension app that works seamlessly on any platform or app on your Apple iOS device. Powered by ChatGPT, it allows you to translate what you're writing into another language in real time and without having to copy and paste from a different translation app, which I find fiddly and annoying. But it also does so much more than that. Struggling to get the tone right with your message? You can get Type AI to fix it for you. It can also check your grammar or simply paraphrase what you've written. Because it's powered by the ChatGPT API, you can also ask Type AI questions, say if you need help writing an essay or constructing an email. You can even get it 
to finish your message for you. So get Type AI for your Apple iOS device. Click my special link in the description for a free trial of Type AI Premium. It's a free trial, just give it a go. Okay, back to states named after people. And Washington is the only one named for a US president. The first one, George Washington, of course. Pennsylvania is named after a person too. It was named by a fella called William Penn, who was granted the land. But he didn't name it after himself. He named it after his dad, who also happened to be called William Penn. Convenient. William Jr. originally wanted to just call it Sylvania from the Latin for forest lands. Transylvania means the other side of the forest. In the end, he combined the two ideas. Delaware is named after the Englishman Thomas West, Baron de la War. He was a governor in Virginia, although his family were actually from Hampshire, the old one. De la War is thought to just be the Anglo-Norman for of the war. A bay was named after him first, then a river, then a state. The name's also been adopted by the Lenape tribe, who tell an amusing story about why that is. Hit pause if you want to read the whole thing, but basically they got sick of the Europeans mispronouncing Lenape, so just let them call them Delaware. And this seems like the perfect point to begin our exploration of the states who take their names from words from Native American languages. But what you're going to notice as we do this is that in a lot of cases, we don't know for certain what those words mean. In some cases, we don't even know which language they're taken from. The colonists did an absolutely woeful job of keeping track of such things, a lack of regard for native languages that clearly continues to irk indigenous peoples. A personal disclaimer then, I am a British guy speaking to you from Germany. I don't speak any of the native languages that are about to crop up. So to avoid causing the sort of irritation that the Lenape described, I'm gonna keep the dodgy European attempts to pronounce native words to a minimum. Let's start off in Alabama, if only for alphabetical reasons. Alabama comes from the name of a Muscogean tribe who were living in the region, although by the 1780s they'd actually migrated to modern-day East Texas, where they still are today. Over the centuries, the Europeans used the term Alabama, or variations of it, to refer to the people and the river from which the territory takes its name. There's a well-worn theory that Alabama comes from a Choctaw phrase, meaning something along the lines of thicket gatherers, but that's now thought to be unlikely. As is the idea, it means here we rest. Basically, we don't know where it comes from. Arkansas gets its name from the Quapaw people. Their tribal name, Agakpa, means downstream people because according to tribal tradition, their ancestors went down the Mississippi River when other tribes went upstream. Anyway, the Europeans refer to them as Akansa or Arkansas, and the state's name is just the plural form of that. But it's the French plural. And the French tend to lose interest before they reach the last letter of a word, so the final S isn't pronounced. Kansas is named after one of the tribes who, according to that same tradition, made it upstream, following the Mississippi and the Missouri. They're the Kansa, or core people, who say that their name comes from a Siouan word meaning south wind, an apparent reference to their use of the power of the wind in war ceremonies. The state of Missouri is named after the Missouri Indians, although Missouri isn't actually what the tribe were calling themselves. Their name in their own language is Neatachi. Missouri comes from the Illinois Miami language word for them, meaning something along the lines of the people with the dugout canoes. The French turned that into Wemezori, whence Missouri. Oklahoma comes from the Choctaw words for people and red, so you can take it to mean red people. And yeah, it sort of is what you think as well, because the region gets the name just as a lot of indigenous peoples are being relocated there. Although the guy who came up with it was Choctaw himself. Illinois gets its name from the French word for the Illinois group of tribes. The word Illinois in turn comes from their word for themselves, which translates to something like ordinary speakers, because they could understand one another. Iowa's story is similar to Illinois in that it's a French attempt at a Native American word for a local tribe. The Bacoje were known by their neighbours as the Sleepy Ones, and it's the French 
version of that that's used for the state, and indeed the Bakoje tribe in English today. The Dakotas are both named after the Dakota people who consisted of four groups. These groups called themselves the Dakota, the Allies, which is pretty cool. One of the theories behind the name Texas is that it also comes from a word meaning ally, this time among the Caddo people, who also use it as a friendly greeting. To the Spanish, it became Tejas, and in English, that became Texas. There's also another theory that Texas comes from the Spanish word for yew tree, because the region's bald cypress trees reminded the Spanish of yews, but the Caddo theory is the more accepted one. And it's pretty much the perfect opposite of the story of Idaho, a word which nowadays is thought to come from this Kiowa Apache word meaning enemy, a word that they used to refer to the Comanche people. Funny story, Idaho was very nearly the name of Colorado, because 19th century colonists were under the false impression it was a native word meaning gem of the mountains. They realised it wasn't just in time and stuck with Colorado. However, in the meantime, a steamboat had been given the name. A mining complex was then named after the steamboat, and then a territory was named after the mines, by which point the mix-up back in Colorado had been forgotten. So, now we have a state called Idaho. OK, Utah next. And the official state of Utah website says there are two theories here. One is that Utah is named after the Ute people who live in the area. Their name means people of the mountains. And the second is that Utah comes from this Apache word, meaning those who are higher up. It strikes me, though, that these could both be true, right? The Spanish might have started calling the Ute the Utah after hearing the Apache word. The Ute don't call themselves the Ute, they call themselves the Nooch meaning the people. Now, have you noticed that all of the Native American-inspired state names I've mentioned so far have come from native words for tribes or people? I've done that on purpose. There's just one more of these. Massachusetts comes from an Algonquian word for the people who once lived there. It roughly translates to at the Great Hill. The tribe lived in the Great Blue Hill region south of Boston. So those are the states named for different indigenous peoples, but there are plenty of other states with native-derived names, and generally, they're named for characteristics of the landscape. For example, Arizona is thought to come from this Artham term, meaning little spring or few springs. That idea is thought to be more likely than the competing suggestion that Arizona comes from a Basque language term, meaning good oak. And the theory it's from the Spanish for dry place has been condemned as a non-starter, basically. The word Wyoming has at least a couple of different potential sources. Some say it's from a Delaware term for large plains, or at the big river flat, and others that it's from an Algonquian term for a large prairie. Either way, the plains, river, or prairie in question ain't in Wyoming. Not that Wyoming. Anyway, the original Wyoming is way, way over in Pennsylvania. But thanks partly to a popular poem called Gertrude of Wyoming that spoke of fair Wyoming and delightful Wyoming, Wyoming became an attractive thing to name a place. And Representative James M. Ashley of Ohio, who was born in Pennsylvania, suggested it for what's now the state of Wyoming. Nebraska is an easier one. It comes from the Oto word for the Platte River. It means flat river, as does Platte River, because Platte is the French for flat. Minnesota comes from these Dakota words, which either mean cloudy water or clear water, depending on how you say them. If you pronounce the S as S, it's clear, but if you pronounce it as SH, it's cloudy. However, these two terms aren't as contradictory as they first appear. It's cloudy as in misty, rather than unclear. The word referred to the river first, then the state. Wisconsin is another uncertain one. It might be from this Menomni word, meaning essentially a good place to stay, or this Miami, Illinois name for the Wisconsin River. My bet's on the second one. Michigan comes from an Algonquian name for the Big Lake, and it means Big Lake. By the way, any Brits who are calling it Michigan, stop it. This should be all the proof you need. Right, where are we going next? Ohio? 
Ohio is another disputed one, actually, but it may very well come from an Iroquoian word meaning Great River. Therefore, Ohio River means Great River River. Kentucky is one of those where we know it comes from a Native American language, but we don't know which one. It's been variously said to mean land of tomorrow, at the river's head, and among the meadows. Pioneer George Rogers Clark claimed that it was the last one of those. Next door, Tennessee's name is a little more straightforward. It comes from the Cherokee name for a village along what's now the Little Tennessee River. Precisely what the word meant, though, is uncertain. Maybe bend in the river, or maybe just meeting place. The waters of the Little Tennessee River eventually reach the Mississippi, the river that gives its name to the state. The river's name in English comes from the Ojibwe word Mississippi, meaning, we'll have a guess, yeah, big river. No one's ever been in any doubt that the Mississippi is massive. And Connecticut is also named for a river. It's thought to come from an Algonquian term meaning place of the long tidal river. That silent sea in the middle of Connecticut is a strange one, by the way. It might well have just been put there by English speakers who conflated the word with the word connect. You'd be surprised how often that sort of thing happens. And by Jove, I think we've done it. That's all of the states named, or at least thought to be named, after terms from Native American languages. That was loads. But there are two other states that I should quickly get on to. Firstly, Alaska. The first reference to Alaska in English is on this map, where it's written as Alaska. That's probably because this map had been translated first from Russian into German, then German into English. The puzzling thing here, of course, is that it has Alaska down as an island even though the word itself comes from a Russian take on the Aleut word for mainland, or more specifically it means the object toward which the action of the sea is directed. Nowadays the state of Alaska of course includes the Aleutian Islands as well. Next let's look at Hawaii, another state that uses the name it had long before the Europeans turned up. Hawaii comes from the Hawaiian language of course, and in Hawaiian Hawaii just refers to the place. It doesn't have like a second meaning or anything, so that's nice and easy. Except other versions of the word do pop up in other closely related languages and dialects, and in those it generally means homeland. For example, to New Zealand's Maori, Hawaiki can be a spiritual, ancestral, or physical homeland. So Hawaii may have at some point also meant homeland. There is another theory though, and that's that the islands are named after a legendary navigator who's said to have discovered them. Both theories seem plausible to me. Right, we're doing well here guys, just a few more to go, so let's head back to the contiguous United States and sweep up the rest. The majority of those that remain get their names from European languages, from the languages of the colonists. Colorado comes from the Spanish for red coloured. They gave the name to the river because of the rouge rocky silt within it. It looks pretty blue to me though. Anyway, the state's named after the river. Montana is just from the Spanish word montaña, meaning mountain, because there are lots of mountains in the west of the state anyway. And sorry to do this to you, but ever since someone pointed out that Montana looks like it's whispering sweet nothings into Idaho's ear, I can't unsee it. Nevada is short for the name the Spanish gave to the mountain range they saw when they arrived on the west coast, the Sierra Nevada. It means snowy mountains, the Nevada bit is snowy. The weird thing is of course that the Sierra Nevada are for the most part in California. So where does California get its name from? Well, Spanish explorers named the area after a mythical land they'd read about in a 16th century novel. California was an island of Amazonian women ruled by a queen called Califre. At the time, Spain was heavily influenced by Arab culture, having spent centuries under the rule of the Umayyad Muslims. So the book's author is thought to have taken his inspiration for the queen's name from the Arabic word Khalif, meaning successor to the prophet Muhammad. The words California and Caliphate are related. One last Spanish one to do, and that's Florida. The sunshine state should really be the flowery one. Florida is from the Spanish for flowery or florid. It's thought it was named after the Spanish Easter feast of Pascua Florida, flowery Easter. Either the feast was taking place around the time the Spanish explorers arrived there, or they saw a load of flowers there and thought, 
It would just be a nice thing to call it. Ah, Indiana doesn't take much decoding. It means land of the Indians and was chosen by the English, who named the territory after the people who originally occupied it. Maine, however, is a little trickier. It might have got its name from the fact that English mariners were calling it Maine, as in mainland, and as opposed to the islands they would fish around. It might also be named after somewhere else. We've seen that the Europeans had a habit of doing that, perhaps somewhere in England with Maine in the name, or even Mayenne in France. Let's stay in New England and head to Vermont. Now, this one I just don't get. The story goes that this comes from the French for Green Mountain, Vermont. But that strikes me as weird, because the French for Green Mountain is actually Mont Vert. There is a theory that Vermont was nicknamed Green Mountain in English first, and that was then translated, in a rather clumsy way, into French, to give it that little bit of extra Gallic flair. That would at least explain the dodgy word order. Right, I count 48 states so far, just two left. And I'm grouping these together in their own little pot, labelled simply don't know. Oregon's origins are a mystery. Maybe it's named after a plant. Maybe it comes from a rather insulting name for the locals. Maybe it's from the Spanish for gently falling waters. Nobody knows for sure. All we do know is that the Columbia River used to be called the Oregon River, and the state is named after that. And Rhode Island's roots are also a mystery, although there are a couple of nice theories. One is that it comes from this Dutch description of a little reddish island, referring to a Quidneck island. Another is that it's simply named after the Greek island of Rhodes, because the Europeans thought one of the islands looked a bit like Rhodes. Either way, it seems at the very least the spelling of Rhode Island is inspired by that beautiful Mediterranean isle. Okay, that's it. One video, 50 state names explained, as promised. If we've made it this far together, perhaps you'd like to show your appreciation by hitting subscribe and by watching this video next. You can also show your support on Patreon and sign up to my free newsletter with lots of word facts and language fun. Totally free, totally free. Enjoy. See you in the next thing.